The philosophy of YouTube, because the medium is the message. Something I see touted as a virtue of YouTube quite often is that it allows you to express yourself. Whoever you are, whatever kind of content you want to make, you can express yourself on YouTube and express your creativity. It's going to sound cynical, but I think this is a myth that benefits advertisers more than it benefits creators. I don't think YouTube is expressive. I think it's communicative. To express something is, to my mind, to take it out of oneself and put it out there in the world. The philosopher R.G. Collingwood talks about creating art as a process whereby an artist comes to be aware of an emotion that they did not previously know they had by putting it into a work of art or an idea. To take something like a feeling or a mood or an idea and almost purge oneself of it by putting it into a physical thing and uploading that thing into the real world, like taking a video and uploading it to YouTube. That's expression. And that's a view of creation and creators that I think is quite common on YouTube and in the discourse surrounding YouTube. But it misses what I think is the most important thing, which is that to be a YouTuber is to have an audience. Maybe not a big audience always, but there is someone out there. There is some other who is being affected by what we make. It's not just taking a thing in oneself and putting it out there. It's reaching into somebody else's life and having an effect on them. And that's not expression, that's communication. There are works of art that are mainly expressive rather than communicative. If you've been to any theatre festivals or like slam poetry evenings on a sort of not quite pro level, you might have seen a lot of works that are expressive in that they obviously mean a lot to the person who made them, but they don't really quite land with an audience. Often the first few projects that a new artist makes will be expressive rather than communicative. And that's cool. It's by going to see other people's art and learning about how art works gradually that we learn how to make art that has an effect, a desired effect on an end user rather than just put something of oneself out there. Kind of like the difference between just telling somebody about a dream you had last night and performing Inception. I definitely think there is room for expressive art, especially if it's expressing a viewpoint that has traditionally been oppressed. Like LGBT art or indigenous art, for instance, I think is really valuable because by expressing those ideas publicly, it poses a challenge to dominant ideas which have previously steamrolled over them. But I think that viewing YouTube as communicative rather than expressive highlights the fact that it comes with a tremendous responsibility. To my mind, being a YouTuber is not self-oriented, it's other-oriented. The messages that we put out there, both explicit and implicit, will be picked up and taken on, often by young audiences. I mean, I, I remember uh, I was reading a thing on Reddit once, and it was somebody who said that they watched a lot of like right-wing reactionary YouTubers, and when they put their hands up in class in university, they were told that that stuff was wrong. And it hit me, wow, I'm a fool to think that as an educational YouTuber, people aren't gonna take what I say into the classroom and actually put it out there. And that highlighted to me a, a feeling of tremendous responsibility. Especially, I think it's not just what we do talk about on YouTube, but often what we don't talk about. For instance, one of the things that I hardly ever see any YouTubers seriously talk about, either on YouTube or in conventions and stuff, is the fact that we work for Google. And we make money for Google. And Google, the company, is doing a lot of shady stuff that we are therefore complicit in. And some YouTubers do shady stuff as well. Jim Sterling has done great work calling attention to people like Pro Syndicate and T. Martin, who use their platforms to market gambling websites that they owned to their young audiences without disclosing that they own those websites. There's a failure, I think, there on their part to realize that YouTube is communicative, that there are real people watching us and we can have moral duties to real people. Not to mention certain YouTubers who will use anti-Semitic slogans or who will use racial slurs and then claim that it's just a joke, as if YouTube is about expression and what matters is what it is inside them that they have expressed, their intentions, rather than YouTube being communicative and what matters is the effect they have had on someone else. The academics Akugo Emajulu and Callum McGregor talk about what they call radical digital citizenship, okay? And they say that we need to understand the degree to which politics and technology are connected and be critical of the relationships between the social and the technical. I think viewing YouTube as communicative rather than expressive 
encourages that radical digital citizenship more. To see it as purely expressive, I think benefits advertisers because it puts all content on an equal footing pretty much and says, hey, I, as long as it's made by a person, it's expressing something and therefore, hey, great, creative expression. The true product of YouTube though, at the end of the day, isn't content. The true product of YouTube is a billboard that gets a certain number of views for a certain demographic and that advertisers can put adverts on because that's what they want, they want attention. And whether that billboard is 20 minutes of a cat playing with string or 20 minutes of like really beautiful art or 20 minutes of fascist propaganda, as long as it's the same number of views in the same demographics, for an advertiser, it's equally good. To start thinking about YouTube as communicative and therefore thinking more carefully about the messages we put out there and the impact we have on people is to start valuing our content for its content which is not the way that advertisers look at it. They value it for its form. And it's to value what we make, not because it comes from us and is expressive of something, but because of what it can do for someone else. And I know that that's potentially a more painful method of creating. I know it's tough to look at a work of art and say, wow, I put loads of time and effort into this and it really means a lot to me, but it's just not gonna, no one else is gonna get it or understand it because it's too internal to me, it's too expressive. But that is a method of creating that I think has the power to do more good. Patreon.com slash PhilosophyTube helps me pay rent and stay alive. Please consider signing up and giving me a couple of dollars a month if you like what I do, or for one-time donations, I have a tip jar at paypal.me slash PhilosophyTube.